All right, my friends, so as promised, as promised, we are going to do a quick a little tour through the new Insta360 Studio 2021 version 4. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we'll see some of the new kind of features uh, as well as we'll see the new just the interface, which is probably the biggest part of it. And then we'll talk uh, a little bit about uh, performance increase. All right, uh, coming up. Okay, my friends, so here's my, uh, first off, it's my MacBook Pro M1. And you guys can, if you want, I'll put, uh, try to remember to put links down below to the other video we did where we did a speed test with this new version up against the old version and up against uh, the new version running on an Intel Mac. So today though, we're gonna do a tour and one of the things that you, or one of the new features was that it would kind of auto detect uh, Insta360 files that are on your SD card. And that's great, uh, but you wanna make sure, this is what I've kind of learned, you wanna make sure that your card is in your card reader or whatever uh, already before you start Insta360, because it actually scans the card on boot up. So if you have actually have it open already and then you pop your SD card in, it doesn't really work. You have to go hit open or shut down Insta360 and start again. So I've got a card in here that has a piece of footage on it and we're gonna come down here and just kind of open this and you'll see new storage device detected, right? Import selected or import all, I'm gonna say import all. Uh, it's gonna grab all that information and there they are. There's the two, two files that I shot and the same files that I shot and used in the other video. So uh, let's let's go through this a little bit. Number one, uh, this here, local files. So if you wanna see files that are local on your machine, of course your SD card, and this is where it kind of auto detects if there is an SD card in your computer already, and if it has Insta360 files on it, uh, you can favorite or view your favorited files. So let's say you're like me, and sometimes you've shot a whole bunch of Insta360 footage so you import it all, maybe it's over a holiday or a trip. So you've got just tons of it. And you import it all and you go through it. You can actually mark, you'll see here on this clip, there's a little star that you can mark as a favorite. So you could be like, I just wanna see my favorites. Right now, nothing, come back here. Yeah, come back here, there it is, right? Take it off, goes away, simple, yeah. Uh, and then of course here, all your files that have been exported already, so. Very nice. Uh, down here on this side, you have your sort. So this is gonna allow you to sort it based on the camera, file size, file type created if you want ascending or descending. Maybe you have uh, Insta361R and an Insta360, Insta360 a one uh, X or an X2. So you could say I want it by camera. You could say I want the bigger files first because I wanna make sure those ones we start tackling right away or you kind of know that it was a really big file so you can organize it however that's where it is and then you have the thumbnail view so i like this one because it just kind of shows the thumbnail and you can kind of scroll through it and kind of see what's going on this one here of course is a tiny little thumbnail and information about the file and this one is just a list view all right so and then of course you can trash them down there very simple uh here this is reframe or see it in full 360. Okay, this one, you know, you use this one pretty much if, if you're like me and you don't do a lot of uh, reframing or you don't do a lot of uh, doing all the movements and keyframing inside Insta360. I do it mostly inside Final Cut. Uh, so I just want to see the 360 file and, and we'll go do the rest there. But this, really important. So timeline, of course, the, or the, the timeline of the clip, play, play pause, Back, back to starting point, go to the end, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, your volume, this plus is for adding a keyframe. So let's say for instance, we'll do a small one here. We, we wanted to start right where it is. So I go keyframe. It says, yes, all this is good, yeah. And I can change this to crystal ball or tiny planet or whatever kind of view you want. I'm gonna keep it right here, lovely. Now at this point in time, I come here, I see another keyframe, but here, I want to actually, uh, we'll do a 
This one they call, what do they call it? Distortion control. And then you have field of view control. So I want to kind of bring this in a little bit. Let's see if I can do it here. Yeah, right like this. So I'm gonna bring that like that. And I'm gonna zoom it in just like a tad. So just kind of come across. And moving the clip around, like right and left and up and down, you can physically just grab the clip and do that. But zooming in all that, you may have more fine tuning ability. Plus, if you want to copy numbers from one, this way you can see it, right? You can be like, oh, it's 57.4. So on my next clip, I want to make sure it's 57.4, etc., etc. Right? So I, I'm, I'm good there. I'm like, I love it. You can see a little keyframe, okay? Even on this one, right? You got keyframe, keyframe, keyframe. And you can see now that if I play this back, we get that cool little zoom in. It's lovely, right? That's exactly, and you can do rotations and you can do all that kind of stuff whenever you click on a keyframe. Um, but what I like about it, and this is what I like actually more than some other software, is that if I realize this took too long, I can just kind of take it and move it. And now that, that zoom or that pan will happen, right, much faster. So you'll see it just be quicker. So I like the fact that I can move these. So I can place a bunch of keyframes on there and be like, ah, this one doesn't take as long. So I'm gonna resize it, make it longer, make it shorter, or whatever it is. And I can go in there and just click on it and play around with this and be like, hmm, I'd like that to, for some reason I want it to tilt. So I'm just gonna click this and we're gonna tilt down because I'm looking at my watch. And there's that pull down. So starts up here and does a little pull toward my watch. Keyframes, play around with it, you'll figure it out, right? Just hit it, tell it what you want, go to the next one, place it, tell it what you want, go to the next one, place it, tell it what you want. And again, these are completely movable, so you can stretch them or place them in time or whatever. Um, the other cool thing that's here is you have your deep track, of course, if you wanna track a subject, so track a person through a frame. Uh, you have that time shift. And even in here, we'll go back to uh, up top here just to show you. This is where you can do this auto frame. Now I don't use this. This goes through your footage and looks for uh, little pieces of clips that it thinks are kind of cool because there's something happening. It's so hit and miss in my opinion that I just don't find it useful. And it is, or it takes a lot of time. Cool, sure. Useful, meh. I don't find it. You might try it out on one or two of your clips, see what you think. Um, and then of course, the big one I find is this little guy here. So 16 by nine, of course, you can change it to whatever you want. Now this is kind of that, the big feature, and there's your, if you wanna do full screen, so you'll see you'll go full screen. I don't wanna go full screen, it takes it back. Um, here's probably one of the biggest features and I'm gonna go here and this is project management. So let's say I did this and I loved it. I'm like, perfect, okay. Uh, and I'm like, so this is a project uh, for YouTube, right? Nice. And then I could take the same clip and say, let's make a new project. And this one's gonna be project, project for Instagram, right? And because of that, it doesn't have to bring in the file multiple times, which is great. It, it, it's, it's much more streamlined. I can actually do multiple with the same footage just right there. Uh, and then I could be like, you know what, this one's great, but because it's gonna go for like Instagram stories, I could change this and be like, I want a nine by 16 and then start doing another set of keyframes and moving this around and doing all kinds of things. So now that it has its own project management, Super nice, I really like that. And like you saw, I can name these for whatever I want. Again, I find that really nice. And I think it'll be useful for a lot of people. Um, stabilization, very similar. The, the big thing for me I find is it's laid out much nicer. So if you look at this, for instance, you kind of start over here to look at your clips and kind of favorite them or organize them or do whatever, just to just figure out what you want then you kind of come up here and choose if you want to do like a export where you're reframing and retiming or like me, you just want to export a 360. So you make that choice. Then you come down here and you start your keyframes and you do all this cool stuff, right? Depending on what you need, right? Including this, right? What, what format you want it in. Then you come over here now and you do all these. So like I said, stabilization, you have what kind of stitching, 
if you're using a special case or anything like that. Uh, you have your image processing, AquaVision if you're shooting underwater, if you want to amplify the voice, etc., etc. Do you want to put a logo on there? Uh, you could even put a custom logo, so you could put your own logo there, I would think. Uh, project management, this is, this is the coolness because now you can be like, hey, that one's done. That, that, this project here, done. You'll see it load up. Perfect. Love it. And what's also really nice that I like is that I can go here where it says start export and it doesn't just start the export, which it did in the old version. You click on it and it actually comes up and allows you to figure out what you want, right? 360 video or reframed. Okay. Uh, all your little settings inside here, color plus remove grain. Just realize if you do these, the export takes a lot longer. It is what it is, but now I can just say add it to queue. Cool. Now I can come back here and go back into my projects and work on this one, get it all perfect the way I want it. Click, right? Add it to queue. Nice. Because before it would start, automatically would start this one, which means that your processor in your computer is just being chewed right up and makes interacting with Insta360, makes interacting with other pieces of software just slower. And it doesn't really matter what kind of computer I have, it was just slower. So now you can do like your two projects or eight projects or whatever it is. And once you're done, you kind of come in here and you say, yeah, export these and you go click. And there it goes. It starts. You're off, you're off to the races, right? So, um, big, big features for me, uh, able to just import off of the actual SD card without you having to kind of do anything. Again, just make sure the Insta360 software is opened after your SD card is in already because it reads it as it boots up. That's cool. Uh, general layout, the general layout of the new one, so much better. It actually has a really nice flow to it. So also super good. Um, Appearance, I like. I like the appearance of it. It's it's just a nice looking piece of software for sure. In comparison, um, the ability now to do all these multiple projects. So instead of having to re-import and do a project and export it and re-import the project and export it, and re you kind of just do it all with a clip. So I believe that's going to help with storage and all kinds of things, right? So being able to have this, these. And just being able to rename them. So in your head, you have that organization, which is again, a much nicer. And then I won't say lastly, but the last thing in this like kind of software is the ability to add to queue without actually having one started already. Because again, we don't have unlimited processor power or RAM. So letting the machine do nothing. Oh, one just, one just finished while, uh, you continue working and let it export once you want it to. Fantastic. Uh, and last thing, last thing, which is probably for those of us on Macs and for those of us with M1 Macs, uh, it's M1 com compatible now, fully, finally, finally. And again, we'll put a speed test, I think down below the, the link to it. Um, it is so much faster and, and efficient now. Like it's surprisingly better. It actually finally uh, is beating my Intel. Not by a lot, but it is. So it's really good. So M1 optimization, uh, we're good. All right, guys, quick tour, not that quick, 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 sort of quick tour of the new Insta360 Studio 2021 version four, version four. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave you there. If you have any questions in regards to it, make sure you leave them down below and uh, that's it. Are you guys upgrading? Because I think you should. This is this is the, the cat's meow, whatever that means. But it's it is it's that. All right, guys. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit the little notification bell because we will have more uh, training videos and more tech news and more unboxing slash reviews coming out all the time. And uh, we'll see you then. Later.